Ah, nice water shower. Really wake you up in the morning. It's really nothing like waking up in your own bed, too. It really puts the extra spring in your step. Or maybe that's the space jump boots. You know, I do not remember how I got back here last night, though. All of it's kind of a vague, loud blur. Anyway. Now that we have these space jump boots, let's put them to work. There were a couple of places in Fendrana that I distinctly recall not being able to climb up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we can make that now. This is actually still a really tight jump, even with an extra jump. Heh, <laughs> hi. One second. Morphology, Ice Parasite, scavenger with a crystalline outer shell. Parasites are hardy creatures able to adapt to any environment within three generations. The Ice Parasite is a prime example. Having adjusted to a frigid climate, this vermin now thrives in it. Omnivorous, it can exist in areas hostile to most life forms. Adjust to that. And that's the ice parasites completely extinct.
A puzzle? I'm no good at those. Is this the Chozo Shaman? Oh. Is this the Chozo Shaman? Oh. This is probably the Chozo Shaman, right? Oh, oh. When you look at them up close, you can even see all the little differences between the different busts and actually tell that the shaman is the shaman just based on the visual cues. Well, time to desecrate. Now this is a fixer-upper if I ever did see one. It's kept in pretty good shape, honestly. Wow, really? I just get this power-up? No tricks? Of course not. Hey, I recognize this music. Oh, this is another rave. I've always figured those baby she-goths knew how to party. Look at them. Supposedly, people will have a lot of trouble with baby she-goths. It's not that tricky as long as you actually use the missiles that you have. They can just pack a little bit of a punch. They're kind of glass cannons. Ah, oh, who's a big cutie? You are. Morphology, She-Goth, supreme predator of the Fendrana Drifts. She-Goths are invulnerable to most beam weapons. The crystals on their back absorb energy, which they can fire at prey. She-Goths have poor stamina. They hyperventilate after using their breath attack, making their mouth area vulnerable. The soft underbelly of a She-Goth is susceptible to concussive blasts. In battle, they expel blasts of frigid gas. Even a fully grown Shigoth isn't that difficult to handle. They're easy to avoid and you can even cheap out and use Morph Ball Bombs. The tricky thing is that every hit that it does takes off roughly 40 health. And they can also soak up quite a few missiles if you don't use Morph Ball Bombs.
That was mildly annoying. So we hold the minus button down to change visors and the plus button down to change beams. The wave beam fires slower than the power beam, but it's a little stronger. You can break open these crates in a single blast. Something that was unfortunately lost from the GameCube to Wii versions is the that when charging the various beams. There are little particle effects on the actual cannon. Because of the free aim with the Wii Remote, uh, it wasn't possible to do the effects the way that they were actually implemented in the GameCube, which is a little unfortunate. The wave beam deals electrical damage. Which means... Don't mind me, just hanging out on the plane of existence, destroying bombers. When locked on, uh, wave beam shots also track targets. Didn't really mean a whole lot in the GameCube version, but with free aim in the Wii version, it means you can do some pretty fun stuff like this. Bam! As cool as that is, it doesn't really come up too often. Oh, look who's taken up residence out in the shorelines. On anything that doesn't die immediately, a charged wave beam shot will also paralyze it for a few seconds. Just in case it didn't already feel really mean killing these baby she-goths. If you aren't spamming the uh, fire button, then the wave beam can fire pretty quickly, just not as fast as the power beam. It's actually possible to use the morph ball to jump up here before getting the space jump. This hanging rock structure appears to have a weak spot near its base. Some stalactites can be dislodged from ceilings, allowing them to be used as platforms to cross otherwise unreachable areas. Morphology, Ice Shriek Bat, Ice Encased Ceiling Dweller. Like standard Shriek Bats, these creatures are easily spotted with thermal imaging. They roost on cave ceilings, subsisting on insects, reptiles, and small mammals. 
Fiercely territorial, they will dive bomb anything that wanders near. That's some tough ice. Even if you did jump up here early, it wouldn't mean a whole lot since this is a wave beam door. Ah, good old scarabs. The wave beam is stronger, but it's really not as good for crowd control on little uh, parasite and scarab like enemies. Also, you notice that it took more than three shots to kill that bombu. That's because the wave beam is more powerful, but only when all three individual shots connect. You can see that they are separate shots. So if you're firing halfway into a wall, it's not as useful. Similarly, the shots oscillate, so if you ever need to just take out a bunch of enemies like scarabs, the power beam is much more reliable. This is a standard spinner device. The generator belts of the spinner can be activated by rapid rotational force. Use the boost ability of the morph ball when inside a spinner to activate the device. Those flicker bats can be a real nuisance right here. I mean, we could go right back up, but the water level's gone down anyway, so we might as well just use this chute right here. A few shots just in the vicinity of flicker bats will usually scare them away from their standard hunting pattern for a few seconds. Oh, so many choices. Never mind, this one's not on. Slightly fewer choices. Yep, that'll work. <laughs> 